Hello. So, somebody asked me yesterday, why haven't I ever done a procedure for the H-Jet or the Honda Jet in Microsoft Flight Simulator? And I replied with, yeah, very good question. Because <laughs> I did cover it when it first came out and did a first look at it, but I've never actually got around to either flying it again or looking at it in detail and going and writing up a procedure. So a functional procedure, you know, so similar to the other procedures where I cut out a lot of the things you don't need to do and um, just shortcut our way to towards being able to go and fly it somewhat realistically. So here we are. We are on the ground at Stansted Airport on the opposite side than the gates. So we're where the, um, the business jets park. And we're going to go through the functional procedure to start up the Honda jet. So we'll go and jump inside. So I've, I'm following my own written procedure. So this is the validation check, if you want, of me checking my own procedure with you. And I'll make a link in the notes of the video. So you'll be able to go and grab a copy of it yourself if you like the Honda jet. OK, so first thing we're going to do is make sure our controls are configured correctly. And I know they already are. Um, we are going to come straight down. You can see I've already done it. I'm going to remove the pilot yoke by clicking on the base of the pilot yoke. And the reason for that is to see here. Now, the first things first, if you use the default views or any airplane, you'll see very helpfully they don't select or they don't show some of the things you need to get at. So I've made a view that shows that on Alt and 1. I made a view that shows the back of the pedestal on Alt and 2. And I've made another view which shows a little bit more on Alt and 3. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is go Alt and 1 to show the panel below the primary flight display. And we're going to switch the battery on. Okay, so then you'll see the systems will boot up. And then after a few moments, we can press Control 2 to see the center display. And we can click the bottom right button, which shows information. You can see our systems boot up. Things come alive around the screens slowly. OK, so then we're going to press Control and 3 to show the, now they're called the Garmin Touch Controllers, or GTCs in the official documentation. We're going to press the Home button. There is no Home button at the moment, so if you weren't on this screen already, the Home button would bring you back to this screen. We're going to go to Aircraft Systems, and we're going to go to Sim Options, and we're going to go to Sim Options in the middle, and we're going to make sure the doors are closed. OK. Then we're going to go into Load Manager. Actually, before we do that, Let's go back into Sim Options. We're going to enable the GPU. So I'm leaving my own checklist already. <laughs> so we enable the GPU. So if we go and look outside after doing that, you see we now have this lovely ground power unit plugged into the aeroplane. So if we go and jump back in. We can then press Control or sorry, Alt and 1 to come back over here. So this is my custom view that I made. And we can connect the external power to the aeroplane. OK, so Control and 3 brings us back over to um, the, now what was it called again? The Garmin Touch Controller. And then we can go to the Load Manager and we can go and select the load for the aircraft. So we can choose to turn the passengers on and off. And in the Sim options, you can choose whether you show 3D passengers or not. So that's just, you know, for a bit of interest there. So obviously that's going to change the payload of the aircraft. You can select the baggage areas as well. If you just click on them, you can put quantities of baggage into those areas. I'm going to leave mine empty for today. OK. So we are then going to go to initialization. So from the load manager, the bottom right button here goes to initialization. So we're going to go and run through the tests for the aircraft. So we go system tests first, and we just click on pre-flight, and it will do all three tests for us. So we just wait for that to happen. If we pan around and put this back in place, you'll see the, the stall protection test happen. So that's doing the, um, the co-pilot yoke there. So we can get rid of that yoke again, so it's not in our way next time. So the test is completed. So when we come back, we get a tick mark there. Interestingly, if you go into system tests 
and do each one individually and go back, it doesn't tick it for some reason. Anyway, uh, we can go into then weight and fuel. So you can go through all of these tabs yourself, programming it all up. Or you can cheat and press sync all from sim, which I'm going to do. Okay, and then you come back and that will be ticked as well. So then you can go to speed bugs. So you can go and calculate all these numbers yourself and fill them in. Or you can just say get from sim and it will fill it all in for you and you can come back again and it's all done. Okay, so then we can either reset or accept initialization. So we'll accept it and we come back. And we can go into flight plan entry. So we are going to fly from Stansted to Edinburgh. That's a flight I've done many times before. I'm not actually going to do the whole flight today. I'm just going to get as far as climbing out with the autopilot on. So add origin. We put in the ICAO code for Stansted, which is Echo Golf Sierra Sierra. And it comes up verifying the name there. Press enter. OK, and we can put in the destination Echo Golf Papa Hotel, which is Edinburgh. Enter. We can put in an en route waypoint. So we can put in the Trent VOR, for example, and it's going to say duplicates found. So when you press enter, it shows you the duplicates. And you can see there's Trent in the United Kingdom. So let's put that in. So to scroll up and down this, because you can't fit much on the screen, you can use the up and down arrows. So we haven't selected our runway or departure yet. So if we go and click on Stansted again, Sorry, not on Stansted. There's a really good point that I've done that, look. I need to click on the origin, not on the airport. So if I click on origin, it will ask me which runway. So I'm going to say runway 22. And then if we want to set a standard instrument departure, we click on origin again. And now it gives us options to change any of the things we've already chosen, including setting a departure. So I'll select departure. Now, this is where it gets interesting. I'm going to change the view slightly so we can see the map display as I'm doing this. So, I'm going to choose BKY5R, okay, and runway 22, and I'm going to say load. It's actually done it. I've actually seen it not do it in the past, and it's just drawn a line straight out of the airport. But if you want to absolutely make sure it's going to work, you say you wanted to change your departure, you can come back in, remove the departure, okay, and it'll do a straight line up to Edinburgh. So if I click on it again, if I select the departure again, so I can select the runway here, so it's already on 2-2, but look at here, I can preview show on map, so it will show me the departure before I choose it, so if I say BKY5R, it gives me an idea of what it looks like, and then I can load that, and it will show it. And that seems to be more reliable. I may have, while I was meddling around with this, I may have just you know, done something to it, but it's just to point out that you can preview them as well as choose them directly. Okay, so if we come down to Edinburgh, we can do the same thing again. So we can either select the arrival runway, so we can say runway 24, or if we come down again, we can select Edinburgh again, and we can select our arrival and approach. So the arrival, we're going to do the AGP E1E. But remember, we can preview it. So we can show that on the map. And that will show it there, which is fine. And we can load that. And if we select the arrival again, we can select the approach. So we've got ILS runway 24 using vectors. And again, we can preview it if we want to. So we can show it on the map. So there's the approach. ILS vectors, load, you know, you can load and activate or just load. So if we load and say OK, it will have done it, but obviously it's out of view at the other end of the flight plan. And that's the basics for getting the, the route in. If you want to use airways along the way, what you will need to do, if we go and look at this interstitial waypoint I've got, if I select a waypoint, I can load an airway and it will show me airways that leave that waypoint and then choose an exit point along that airway. Yeah, so it's fairly straightforward to do airways. If we just click in the background, can we get out that way? No, we just have to use the back button. OK, so once you've got your route done, you can press home and you're back on the home screen. OK, so we now need to go and make sure the um, oxygen is switched on. So we're going to go and press the oxygen uh, button in. 
on the um, the primary flight display. So you press Control One to get here. And then we set ch go and check the ELT is set to norm, which it is, and check the nose wheel steering is set to norm, which it is. So the reason I'm being so careful about checking these things is if you have changed any of them, this aircraft tends to remember what they were last switched to. So you do need to be careful about procedures. So control two brings us over into the middle and we're going to go to the, the, what's it called? The Garmin flight control, the GFC, which is the autopilot master control panel, basically. So we're going to go and set our target altitude for our flight. So you can see that at the top of the altitude ribbon as you roll the knob. So we'll just, for our example here today, go and say we're going to climb out to, say, 20,000 feet. OK, so we've got 20,000 programmed in. We can do heading select and go and choose again. If you look around, you can see the numbers elsewhere. So there isn't a great view to do this from. So, sorry, that was altitude <laughs> I've just modified. Uh, let me go and do that again. So heading. We're going to go and set the heading bug to the runway direction of, de of departures, which is 222 degrees. So there's the heading bug is set to 222 degrees. So we can then go and pre-select. You'll see that at the top of the both the primary and the um, co-pilot um, primary displays, you can see the autopilot modes up here. So obviously there's nothing configured at the moment, but if I went and said nav mode, it will come up and it will say FMS. Now, if you've got the um, navigation system in a different CDI mode, so at the moment it's active nav is FMS, we can flick that between localizer one, localizer two, and FMS. So you must be an FMS if you're gonna use GPS waypoints, okay? So, yes, clicking nav put us into lateral navigation mode of using the FMS or the route programmed in. If you wanted to use VNAV on the way out, you can do that. So you can press VNAV and it will say V Alt S. And then if you wanted to do a flight level change to get to that, you can press FLC and you can then choose your speed. Now on the speed, you've got a, a roller here goes between FMS and manual. So if you go to manual, you can choose your departure speed. If you leave it on FMS, it's going to use whatever's programmed in into the flight management computer. OK, so we'll leave that as it is. One thing to bear in mind is do not arm the auto throttle when you're on the ground, and I'll show you why. Under no normal circumstances, we can drag the throttles out of shutoff, and then we can move them around. See, look, I didn't quite move that one out of shutoff. Have I got it yet? No. There we go. So I can move them around. Obviously, the airplane is going to complain about me doing that. If I arm the auto throttle, I will no longer be able to. I'm moving my sticks on the desk here. You can no longer move the throttles. So you, you must not have auto throttle armed on the ground. Yeah. Okay. So control one brings us back over. We're going to go and set the barometric pressure. You can either do it via this knob or you can press B on the keyboard to shortcut it and it will get you your local barometric pressure automatically for the altimeter. So then we're going to press Alt and 2 to come back and we're just going to check all the settings of the ice protection as we need them. So most of the systems on the aeroplane are automatic, so it's norm everywhere. Um, engine anti-ice is off, that's fine. And we can just, yeah, we can just check over those, make sure they're looking good. So once we're happy with that, we can come back up to the center instrument panel and we can just check the AFC servo power switches are, are dark. No, notice if we turn any of these, or if you press any of them, they actually switch off. So you want them to be dark and they are by default. Okay, so we're ready to start the engines. The engine start switches are down below the, um, the displays here. So we can start both at the same time, but I'm gonna do one at a time. So we'll start the right engine and you'll see the numbers come up on the center display. Notice we haven't touched any lights yet. The external lights on the Honda Jet are fully automatic. You can control them manually, and I can show you where they are. 
So while we're waiting for that engine to start, it only takes about 20 seconds to start each engine. Look, he's done it. Engine number two is running. Let's go and start engine number one, or the left engine. So while we're waiting for that engine to start, if we go into aircraft systems, and oh no, I'm going to get this wrong, aren't I? System controls, exterior lights. There we go. So they're all on norm, which means fully automatic. And there's a, rule, a set of rules in the documentation you can read that tell you how they are governed, so they'll switch on and off completely automatically. But you can take over and use them if you want. OK. So engines are up and running. That was fairly straightforward, wasn't it? So having started the engines, you will notice the external power has automatically switched off and cabin power has lit up saying off. So we have to uncage that and turn on the cabin power, which basically means we're now using the engines to generate the electricity. So that's your bus transfer from the big jets right there. OK, so we are pretty much ready to go. So the last few things we need to do before, or while we're taxiing actually, but we'll do it right here before we start taxiing. We're going to check that active nav is in the right mode. We're going to check the flaps are in takeoff. So we're going to put them, there's only, there's only three settings for flaps. There's um, cruise, takeoff, and landing. Uh, we're going to check the trim. This is an important one. And it, you will get an error or a warning on uh, as you accelerate on the runway. If you look down here on the pitch gauge on the bottom left of the center screen, you want to move the green marker using the elevator trim into the green area. So it actually changes color look when it's in the right place. OK, so then review any messages. There are no more messages here, so we're good to go. And then we can check our pre-selected climb and speed mode to just have another look at that while you're taxiing out. So we're going to come off the parking brake. I'm going to put the head tracking on. And we're going to go out towards runway 22 at Stansted. Oh, hello, Sims just stuttered there. So we've got an Airbus park next to us. So yeah, this has been fun looking at the Honda Jet. Obviously, it's been updated many times since it first came out. But I have really been surprised at how good it is. There's lots and lots of functions I haven't even touched on around configuring the different displays to show different things. just taxiing and crossing the main runway. Obviously, if we had ATC, we would be holding short and requesting permission to do this, but we don't have ATC, so we can do what we like, basically. <laughs> OK, on to the taxiway. Let's have a little look at the, the jet while we're taxiing. It's a nice looking jet, isn't it? It's very quirky. It's interesting how the engines are on these pylons away from the fuselage. I'm guessing that's for that will make it that's why it's so quiet inside the cockpit. So remember, we've gone for flight level change and uh, VNAV. So we should be pretty good straight off the runway. We'll see how we get on. So 
So general instructions reading the documentation with the aircraft for the normal checklists for it. Following takeoff, yeah, we, we move the throttles to take off the tent. We rotate at the VR speed, which will be marked on the um, indicated airspeed ribbon. We go gear up after put for positive rate of climb. Um, flaps to up at 130 knots minimum. And then we can go throttles to maximum continuous thrust. So it's got a FADEC throttle system. And then auto throttle on after that as required basically. And then obviously autopilot on. But you're basically looking to achieve about 210 knots for best climb. At maximum continuous thrust. Okay, so full throttle. Look at the rate of acceleration, it's absolutely amazing. Okay, so rotate. Gear up. Flaps up. Just trim it out gently. And autopilot on. And we're good to go. So remember we can go for auto throttle as well. Should we have a look from outside? It's a lovely day. So notice it's levelling out, that's because we've got the VNAV involved. So it's hitting the restrictions on the standard instrument departure automatically and the speed restrictions. It will start to do a right turn anytime soon. If we go and have a look inside, we'll see that happen. You can watch here, we're just approaching the first turn. And there it goes. So there's not much left for us to do there. The airplane is going to basically manage itself using VNAV all the way up to the cruise altitude and using maximum by uh, using the auto throttle. Okay, so I'm going to leave it there. Hopefully you've enjoyed that. So I will put a list, uh, sorry, a link to the procedure I've written up, which covers the steps we went through in um, the notes of the video. So if it's useful to you, go grab a copy. See you soon. Take care.